Hi, it's Mary Jane here from Home for the Harvest, and today I'm here at the greenery with Ken Salville, who's helping me with one of my worst houseplant problems, tiny bugs in houseplant soil. So Ken's gonna give us some of his best tips for how to deal with that. Mary Jane and I have been looking at, at the plants, and you know, here at the greenery, we don't really have any bugs around, so they've got some secrets. But it's common to see little black flies that live in your house plants. very common. There's two main types that you'll see. There's fungus gnats, and then there are shore flies. The fungus gnat looks like a little miniature mosquito, so it's got like a little skinny body on it, and it's kind of hard to see. And what the fungus gnat does is it lives on the sort of the decaying material that's in the pot, so rotting roots sometimes, but just the rotting, you know, compost that the soil's made out of. So it's kind of a normal thing. And then the shore fly is a little round, like has a body that's a little bit fatter. And, but they're still very tiny, so it's hard to see without maybe a magnifying glass sometimes. The shore fly just likes some moist soil. It's looking for like a swampy location where it can lay eggs and do its thing. So they like plants that are over water. So if you can keep your plants a little bit on the dry side, that's helpful. And also if you put a little bit of sand or loose fine gravel on the surface of your soil, that also, you know, the shore flies don't like that. They don't like to go through gravel before they get into the soil. So that reduces both, both the shore flies and the fungus gnats. But there are other things that you can do. The yellow sticky traps, sometimes greenhouses, that sort of thing, they'll have these little yellow sticky traps around and they've just got a sticky substance on a yellow trap. And those insects, when they see that yellow, they can't resist. So they fly right at the yellow color and they get stuck. So it does help to reduce the population a little bit, but it really helps you identify what the problem is. So that's sort of what we look at there is we're looking for those uh, those little insects and identifying them. Then once you identify that you have them, again, we can do those preventative measurements, so letting it dry out more and then also applying a little bit of dry material like gravel or sand on the surface, that's useful. But there's also a product which is a, a living organism. It's a little microscopic uh, nematode that's available and it comes from all different brands so it has different names and sometimes they call it grub buster or they'll have different names like that so you have to kind of shop around ask your local garden center and then they'll be able to tell you what is the product that you can use and because it's a living organism it really only eats those particular larvae from those flies so then you just apply a little bit usually mix it with water and water the plant with it and that's it and that will really really help to reduce those flies they're more of a, a hassle than they are. They're really not detrimental to the plants. Do the nematodes work for shore flies and fungus gnats? Yes. Oh, they amazing. Work for both. Cool. So yeah, and you gotta check the label and see because on some products it'll actually say on the label which insects they would be best against. 